Thank you everyone for attending. It's good to see everyone here virtually. Um, and what we're gonna do today is kind of talk, um, you know, sort of at a high level about some uncomfortable concepts um, that uh, have arisen with regards to data leak sites and ransomware slash extortion actors. So, um, you know, basically we're gonna talk about the breadth and scope of the average set of data that is leaked on ransomware data leak sites. Um, and what we're seeing nowadays, you know, is you know, data leak posted to most DLSs, even if it's just a small uh, proof sample, um, is hugely damaging. Um, there's all kinds of information being leaked, even in just those small proof packs uh, once they're posted to data leak sites. Um, and that stuff is getting circulated and broadcast far beyond just the singular onion websites on the dark web, et cetera. Um, uh, and, and again, just to kind of back up and define some things, you know, if you're not familiar, a data leak site is, you know, just at a high level, uh, a, a blog or a website that a ransomware or an extortion actor uh, will post uh, to list all their victims and then all the data that they've stolen, um, taunt the victims into paying, et cetera. So um, the issue here is that the data doesn't just stay on those sites um, uh, and we're seeing uh, qu quite a bit of interesting developments around there. Um, there's new ransomware and extortion operations uh, appearing constantly, meaning lots of new data leak sites, some small, some big, but it presents a lot of new hurdles for victims with regards to understanding the full impact and breadth of a breach and a subsequent leak. Um, having some sort of grasp on where your data has gone and who sees it and what is exposed and where is getting very foggy and very murky these days. Um, damaging data is being posted uh, immediately, as I said, kind of in the, usually when, when, when actors will post stuff to these sites, um, they may say we hacked, you know, company XYZ um, and here's, you know, a couple megabytes of proof. And that even that stuff can have uh, PII, personally identifiable information included in it, um, intellectual property from the victim or company that was hit, um, all the way up you know, in, in very personal data as well. Um, and we'll talk about a particular actor a little bit later in this uh, presentation um, that is uh, specifically targeting some uh, clinics in Brazil and then posting some really damaging stuff on the data leak site. Um, there are groups and threat actors that rebroadcast and resell data leaks from other groups. Uh, that is, if your data is posted to a data leak site, you can pretty much nowadays assume that that's not the only place it will end up. Uh, even in scenarios where victims have cooperated with their attacker uh, that is to say, maybe paid them to get the data uh, and their entry on a leak site removed. Um, that's not a guarantee that the data won't pop up again somewhere else and the victim is still at risk, uh, exposed, etc. cetera. Um, we, we routinely see, uh, you know, in, in that context, we routinely see data from previous victims pop up on new sites, as, especially kind of in the wake of uh, Black Cat and some of those act in Lockbit, uh, various activities against them, uh, where you know affiliates that have kind of been orphaned by those operations uh, and the ups and downs of them uh, are going to these other uh, places to to post and profit off whatever data they they may retain from the attacks that they carried out. Um, and on top of this, there's legal issues that, that intertwine, right? So when uh, these breaches and leaks happen, uh, companies, uh, victims have to respond. Um, there are regulatory and legal uh, issues that intertwine there, SEC compliance uh, regulations, GDPR laws, et cetera. And we'll expand on how some groups have historically kind of played, that, played into that uh, with regards to their taunts uh, of extortion. And we'll talk about leaks being forever. As I mentioned before, um, data from data leak sites uh, is, is often siphoned out and rebroadcast, uh, reshared, resold uh, across platforms that aren't the singular dark web site you know, that, that they originated on. We're talking like Telegram and Discord groups that exist solely to uh, consume and rebroadcast this data and it, in some cases profit off of it. There's groups like Dispossessor uh, that are hosting and reselling data leaks that were previously paid for by ransomware victims. So it's cases where you know, the victim thinks that they complied and dealt with the issue however they saw fit, leading to them paying. 
uh, and having their entry removed and only to find the data pop up uh, at this other uh, operations site. And then of course it flows out from there. And we see I've got a graphic, you know, a lot of people have heard of some of the biggies like, you know, with regards to these actors like Lockbit, um, but you know, there's a lot of smaller actors popping up all the time. Um, Meow, Malik, Malik Team, Dragon Force, et cetera. Um, and you know, just every week there's at least two or three new credible uh, actors popping up with leaked sites or leaked channels or methods of distribution of, of data that feeds into this issue. So a couple examples here, uh, just you know, to kind of leap into what we see, you know, Ransom Hub, uh, which we see on this slide, recently gained some exposure with regards to change healthcare. Um, you know, by all appearances, they were multi extorted multiple times, um, you know, across their dealings with Black Cat and then subsequently Ransom Hub. Um, we're seeing a lot of actors and a lot of uh, uh, um, behavior that indicates that, you know, what I call orphaned affiliates um, are going to platforms like Ransom Hub uh, uh, in order to attempt to continue to profit off their data. If they can no longer work with whomever they were working with on the Lockbit side of the world or the Black Cat side of the world or the Play or Royal or whatever side of the world, they will go elsewhere to try to profit off of what they've stolen and retained from the attacks that, that, that they carried out. Um, and these are just a couple examples uh, and there's there's several several others that, uh, that we've observed, um, but there's, you know, there's kind of a secondary economy popping up around these things as well um, that specifically want to serve the needs of these orphaned affiliates uh, and rogue threat actors that need somewhere to post their data and, and manage the leaks and profit off of them, et cetera. Um, you know, so that can be, you know, like I said, these rogue affiliates, or it could be even smaller operations like uh, regional hacktivist groups that are now embracing ransomware um, you know, just using like uh, leaked Babook builders or leaked Lockbit builders, um, but they need a, a, a place to, if, if, if they exfiltrate data and they want to profit off of it, they need a place to put it. And so they can go to these services um, and, and do exactly that. But there's also other ones that are popping up. We'll talk about something called Rabbit Hole a little bit later in this talk that existed only to serve this need. Excuse me, copy. So here we'll get into some more of the uncomfortable truths, right? Um, so this is a, a, an issue with uh, Ricida ransomware. This emerged in late 2023. But if we kind of go down the thought exercise -y part of this, um, it gets really, really uncomfortable and could potentially get really, really ugly. And this is just one, uh, one example that, that's very prominent uh, and was used and leveraged by the threat actor to extort, you know, attempt to extort the victim. Uh, but here, what we have is, is something that kind of, you know, bleeds into the the the, the, the type of data uh, being exposed and broadcast into into you know, the universe when these leaks happen. Um, in this particular attack, um, it was against Mount St. Mary's Seminary, um, and where it gets tricky is the threat act is, is what the threat actor claimed to have found. Uh, in the exfiltrated data. And in this specific case, as we see on, uh, on the slide, uh, it involved illicit uh, child material. Um, and so if you kind of think about this case, uh, in, in other words, one of the hosts that they exfiltrated data from and, and encrypted uh, had this material on it, and it is now part of the data set that um, this threat actor uh, hosts. Uh, and is threatening to uh, 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 distribute or, or, or release and leak. Um, so this, you know, this, in this scenario, we have the threat actor that is, you know, assumably in possession of this illicit material, which could in carry its own legal implications. Um, also, uh, we have the legal, potential legal ramifications that could. Um, uh, come down upon the, uh, the, the organization, organization that was hit, as well as the individual uh, who you know, was the user of the machine. You know, all this stuff could get very ugly, um, you know, depending on where this data ends up and, and how it's handled um, post-leak. 
Uh, but this is a situation where the threat actor has found this and decided to use this specifically as an angle of extortion. Um, and, and again, this is just one very prominent example, and they were very, very loud about it on their site. Um, but this is you know, one, one, of, one of many. And there are a much more common scenario is you know, slightly less illicit situations where maybe you have uh, an employee machine with um, you know, selfies that they had meant to send to a, a significant other, you know, uh, somewhat suggestive, whatever uh, material, you know, that kind of stuff also ends up in these data leaks and proof packs uh, uh, quite often. Uh, and while maybe not as illegal as some of the material highlighted by uh, Rysita, um still carries its own implications, especially for, you know, the victims or, or the individuals that from which the material originated, right? They have no idea that they are now part of this data leak and you know, potentially their, their images or uh, um, you know, uh, emails to family or whatever are, are now you know, out for, for, for you know, all to see in theory. But you know, again, very uh, sketchy legality uh, lines here uh, and direct use by the threat actor to, um, uh, to, 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 to leverage it as an as a, as a extortion tactic. Now, if we look at something a little more uh, recent here, and I may mispronounce it, this, but uh, uh, um, uh, Chiolong uh, Ransom Group, uh, this emer they, these guys emerged in, um, it's, the slide should say April, 2024. But um, these guys are 100% focused on clinics and targeting of medical facilities in Brazil specifically. Um, their proof packs that they're posting to the site, uh, which are linked directly through Mega, uh, contain a lot, you know, nothing but patient PII, um, compromising photos, like before and after surgery photos. Um, and, and all this stuff is displayed prominently on the Threat Actors Data Leak site. Um, and you know, this is just the, the default state. You know, once once the victim is is listed on the site, you know whether or not there's negotiations uh, or communication going on, this stuff is out there. Um, so they're posting this proof of attack data, which contains very sensitive medical patient data, including fully nude before and after surgery photos to the public. Um, also includes forms that patients have filled out, uh, copies of identification. Um, and these sample packs are gigabytes in size, right? So they have a few pictures and things directly on the victim's entry on the on the data leak site. Uh, but if you actually were to download the sample pack, it's many gigs, and that's just a portion of what they've they've exfiltrated. Um, so it's 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 very uh, uh, you, you know again you, you think about this material being out there, you think about the individuals of whom are. Um, uh, you know, represented in the leak, you know, the, 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 you know, the people who the photos are of, et cetera, you know, it, they may probably don't even know that they're in this set of data that is now floating around out everywhere. Um, and so, it, you know, just to, you know, kind of highlight, you know, we have their typical entry of a company, um, you know, targeting clinics in Brazil, specifically uh, releasing before and after patient photos directly on their data leak site. Um, along with corporate and uh, patient uh, PII, uh, I blurred this photo on the slide. But if you know a lot, this is a current uh, actor, and their site is up now. Uh, and these images uh, are not blurred on the data leak site, and they are plentiful. So again, uncomfortable truth, but it's out there, and people need to know about it. Uh, and, and it's a, I, I, whether or not these these victims even know, um, it creates a very complicated scenario. Uh, especially when you consider um, the longer tail that these leaks and attacks have, as we'll as we'll discuss uh, a little bit later in this uh, talk. So legal complications and ramifications, um, specifically, kind of at a high level, this is you know where. Threat actors are trying to leverage uh, regulatory laws, uh, uh, com com privacy laws, regulations. You know the, the new SEC rulings rules uh, and GDPR 
uh, laws, these types of things are being weaponized uh, and have been for some time now, but it's, it's basically commonplace um, for these to be part of uh, what the attackers use in sort of their arsenal of extortion, you know, their, their bag of things to threaten uh, when they need to scare a client or a, a victim into, uh, into paying. Um, so we have threat actors that are openly uh, making threats against GDPR and SEC violations. Um, this really kind of kicked off with uh, Black Cat and the Meridian Leak uh, stuff a while back. But we see this with, with many, many, many threat actors. Um, Scarecrypt, um, Lockbit uh, has uh, uh, GDPR related language in all of their um, ransom notes um, still to this day. Um, Radar Group uh, is another recent one that kind of functions in a way similar to Dispossessor. They specifically threaten against you know, uh, uh, reporting their victims to these regulatory bodies. Same thing with um, Ransom VC, um, Grief and Payer Grief is, is another good example. But you know what we're, we're talking about here is you know, open uh, and direct weaponization of these laws and regulations um, in order to leverage them for extortion. Um, in addition, to, um, when these breaches and leaks occur, uh, response, there has to be a response and all this stuff is very costly, um, especially to smaller operations that maybe um, aren't used to dealing with uh, handling uh, these two things at the same time, responding to the breach, as well as trying to adhere to all these new rules and regulations, um, especially with regards to the SEC stuff, right? So just kind of at a high level, um, I think companies have you know four business days to file their 8K, um, you know, within determining materiality of, uh, of, of what happened, there can be no reasonable delays, et cetera. And, and everything has to be very formatted and rigid with regards to how things are reported. And that's very difficult to companies that aren't used to dealing with that. Uh, and, and so we're already seeing situations where that's being, um, where that's coming up in terms of, of, of penalties. Um, you know, there was a, a recent uh, imposing of a fine, I think, to uh, the international exchange because of failure to uh, properly report uh, the breach. So, um, you know, all these things are complicated and it becomes even more complicated when it's very murky and difficult to understand how far your 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 leak or breach is, is reaching, you know, what is affected and what is exposed and where did it go. Yeah, that's all very difficult to tell nowadays because once your data, again, once your data is on a DLS, it's not just on the DLS anymore, it's, it's going further. Um, the legal complications, uh, you know, here we talked about the, the, the direct weaponization of these threats. These are some slightly uh, older examples, but you know, I mentioned grief uh, ransomware and then ransom VC, uh, both uh, directly uh, uh, you know, weaponize or use these as in threatening language and, and weaponize these things. Um, but again, we see it with uh, just you know any, all all the big guys now, uh, and a lot of the smaller operators are are, are leveraging this within their their, their language and, and and threats. So I keep saying that this stuff is blurry and murky, and it's hard to gauge the uh, scope of of data leaks and where everything is going. And it, because with every DLS and every new DLS, there are now um, amplifiers uh, uh, and and groups and actors that serve only to spread that those leaks out and make them part of the greater universe of uh, of, of, of databases and, and leaks that are that are out there and available um, so there are telegram groups and, uh, and, and and discord groups that are dedicated solely to um, uh, uh, broadcasting uh, monitoring data leak sites and broadcasting the new entries um, repeating or amplifying links to the data, sometimes re-hosting data so that it's available. So, you know, we're, get, we're seeing independent mirrors as well as independent amplifiers of data that is hosted on data leak sites. Um, and all this stuff is not necessarily in the control of um, the, the threat actors or the ransom operators or the victims. You know, now the data is just everywhere and there is no, uh, no control. 
Um, and I mentioned the orphaned affiliates and rogue actors are migrating to hubs and aggregators, services like Ransom Hub and Rabbit Hole. So if, you know, where they can no longer, um, you know, profit off of their data, they're going to find a place where they can. And there are services now that cater directly to that. And there's direct monetization of victim data now, regardless of the status of, of the, of whether or not they uh, uh, paid or, co or or cooperated with the attacker, right? So, uh, you know, I, I mentioned before, it, it, victims can uh, find that uh, you know even if they do pay or cooperate with a with an attacker, their data can end up somewhere else on some other site, um, completely out of their control, and at that point, just all bets are off. And again, we kind of saw a, a sampling of that with the ransom hub and change healthcare situation, but there's you know, a lot of micro examples of that and then and, and other um, platforms that are feeding directly into it. Um, so one neat example is Rabbit Hole. They are no longer um, active. However, uh, for a couple months while they were, this was, I think, uh, memory serves, you know, just two or three months back. Um, but they specifically advertised themselves, starting in some Russian forums, um, as uh, a platform for small groups to post their data and manage the communications and monetization of that data. So with Rabbit Hole, it was you know a website, you know a platform. Anyone can go, and it functioned kind of like an old school RAS. You make an account uh, and you set up your campaigns. And then Rabbit Hole will take a small cut of whatever um, whatever money comes in, whatever profit comes in. Um, but they give you they supply the platform to manage the campaigns, and the campaigns include the actual hosting uh, and uh, transfer you know, of the data, communications with the victims. You know, so there's the chat portal built in and all that fun stuff, um, as well as the payment side of it. So. Uh, managing the uh, generation of addresses for Bitcoin or Monero or whatever they accepted, um, and then uh, uh, guiding uh, the victims through that process all within that platform. Rabbit Hole existed just for this purpose, um, and there are others popping up um, in, in their wake, but uh, so far they were kind of the most impressive. Um, again, just because of the, the, the feature set that they uh, uh, provided sort of at launch time, it was pretty complete. Again, they're no longer active, but at the time, anyone could go in there and set it up. And it was solely for the purpose of these smaller groups to have a platform to distribute data leaks that they otherwise couldn't get out there. Um, and again, Ransom Hub is another, uh, another uh, good example. Um, stuff has appeared on Ransom Hub that had previously appeared on other other leak sites, and that's a that's a frequent thing. Um, there we go. So you know, again, uh, dispossessor is another uh, interesting one. They uh, kind of previously popped up on the ever fluctuating breach forums um, amongst a few other uh, venues. Uh, basically uh, providing um, new, newly hosted links to prior, previously other operator victim data, right? So the, the, some of their early forays were hosting um, old lockbit victim data, uh, which they would uh, promote through various means. Uh, but we've seen other, um, other previous operators victim data also pop up in Dispossessor's hub, including victims that were previously listed on CLOP, um, Hunters International, 8Base, um, and you know, several others. So you know, again, they're another one of these kind of services that um, uh, is, is, is coming up in the, in, in the wake of some of these larger operations fizzling a bit, um, but you know, they're very, uh, um, very functional and they are uh, growing at a rapid rate. So you know, these things are appearing. There's a very sort of steady and healthy um, feed of data for them to uh, uh, consume and aggregate 
And again, once it's on these platforms, it's it's being also amplified uh, across other 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 venues. So you know, again, your 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 Telegram amplifiers and your your, your Discord channels, etc. So you know, again, the point being, these 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 leaks once they're on a singular um, dark web based data leak site, uh, that's not the only place they end up. If a victim goes and assumes that they, you know, they can pay the ransomware, have their entry removed, have the data taken down. Uh, the attacker says they deleted the data. Um, that's these days, um, you can't, really can't guarantee that that's the, the end of the leak. Um, these things move on forever. And, and even that small window of time between, um, you know, listing and payment, um, that stuff has been siphoned off by other platforms, other aggregators, other actors, and that those that data is going to be rolled up or included into other leaks in the future. You know, meaning you know a year or two from now when we see a big headline in the news about you know some bazillion petabyte uh, you know cache of data being found, um, some of that's being fed by by these leaks. So you know the stuff lives on forever, uh, and the they, the the actual types of data that we're starting to see get exposed in here is very problematic and can have a long, long sort of tail of legal implications um, within, uh, for the victims uh, potentially, you know, given the, the types of stuff that we're seeing and the uh, uh, volume at which it's uh, being kind of shared and, and spread out there. Great, so with that, um, uh, I guess we can open it up to uh, questions and Q&A, but I appreciate everyone's time. Um, and again, hopefully uh, uh, that uh, shed some light on some some stuff at a high level, but that's some interesting bits that we're seeing with regards to uh, data leak sites.